Hey! Do you guys know the Muppet Man? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's just get straight into this conversation of Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, we're talking like current format. We're talking like future formats. We're talking future hype. We're talking card hypes. We're talking bad, good. We're just talking. I just want to have a conversation with you. With you. <laughs> All right, you know, first things first, I do want to get into that right now. We're in a pretty heavy format, especially with Ishizu tier being pretty much to tier zero. Like, I mean, can you guys blame me? Like, that's an actual deck that everybody just... Either they don't enjoy playing against because they don't, they're not playing it or they enjoy playing it because it's a very skillful deck. It actually, one thing wrong can actually just snowball for you and your opponent ends up winning because you just messed up. Um, it's happened to me a lot, but you learn. You live and learn. Uh, that's just Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, looking at my Taylor issues with deck right now. And I think the biggest problems in these deck are the fact that we're able to basically shuffle cards back into the deck. That's a huge problem. And if we don't solve it, if Konami doesn't solve it, then we're just going to keep running into these issues. Another problem I want to say is like all the tier limit monsters, uh, they're just overpowering you know have you guys ever actually thought about it or if you compare it to like dragon ruler format where uh they were back in the days dragon ruler format if you guys didn't know was just overpowering actually that's when i joined Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> i'll give you a little bit of insight on that when i joined Yu Gi Oh, i remember my first actual kind of competitive deck i wasn't a competitive player but the locals i went to they actually helped me which they were amazing. They're the kind of ones that I guess started my Yu-Gi-Oh niche going into. I started with a group of friends, but <laughs> um, it was it was just exciting. They got me into Chaos Dragons. Chaos Dragons was like a structure deck with Light Pulsar and Dark Flare Dragon and super exciting. But that was back in the days. But I was getting into the format when Dragon Rulers were the best deck and it was what they call tier zero. Meaning it's the only deck you gotta play and I think spell books later out, later on or earlier on came out and they were like they were competitive they were back to back and something was going on I don't remember I wasn't fully aware of the format but I just know it was like dumb I just I was on the other side I didn't enjoy playing against the dragon roller format and just watching them play was like watching solitaire <laughs> And now look at me. I'm over here playing Tier Limit and Shuzu. Uh, feels like solitaire sometimes, but it's really fun. You come to see that, I don't know, just getting all these monsters out of your graveyard and either fusion summoning them, summoning them with their effects. The fact that they have two effects <laughs> is like unnecessary. Even if they just had the one effect to fusion summon, I still feel like it's, it's crazy. Like, Rhino Heart being insane that it's a water. Like, you guys don't understand that if it's a, since it's a water, it's like the Bistios can't banish it. You're able to special summon it. I mean, I guess the Bistios will banish whatever you send off of Rhino Heart's effect. But yeah, it's just a dumb deck. And now I'm here on this side playing solitaire with myself. And realistically, I feel like this deck has made me a better player. Some people might just say, nope, nope, Shizu Tier is the worst. I don't like it. Don't ever want to see it. I want it to get banned. I want it to go away. And <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I honestly think it's like a really good deck. And it is. It is. It's the best deck. I feel like if you actually looked at every YCS championship or regionals, it's always in the top. Always, always up there. It doesn't matter who it is. If you're a really good player, it's up there. If you just got lucky and your melee was insane. <laughs> oh, sorry. But if your melee was like insane and you were just going crazy, like it was just, it's there. I don't know. It is what it is. You're going to get the top. You're going to win. You get prizing. And I think this is a really generous format. Um, I really do believe that this format really teaches you skill. And if you're able to live through it and play through it, I think it'll make you a better player. 
That's just my opinion. Remember that. You don't have to listen to me. You can go listen to somebody else. But in my opinion, in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh standards, <laughs> that's how I feel. Um, we can just start, start getting into the next format. So next format, we have Cash Steer coming up. Now, with Cash Steer being the best deck, I can't tell you, like, it's going to be tier zero. I can't tell you it's going to be low tiers. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be tier one. <clears throat> the reason why I say that is because it has heavy potential to be like a rival to Tailorman Shizu. Why do I say that? Now, Kastira has an end board of this card called Kastira Arise Heart. Now, that's some XYZ monster that you're able to just special summon on top of a Kastira monster if you activated the effect of Kastira Shangri La this turn. And what you would soon learn if you play the deck, you do activate Kastira Shangri La multiple times because. Kastira Shangri-La is able to block multiple zones on your opponent's field, which is limiting your opponent's zones limits their monster count that they're going to have on board, which hurts every deck. Even back row. Back row decks that are just focused on set by pass, you can block those zones if you know what you're playing against. But yeah, and if you guys are going to watch my next video, you soon know that in the OTS packs, I open the Shangri-La, <laughs> but I have multiples. <laughs> the second, so that Cash Jira Arise Heart, that XYZ that gets swimming at the end of a, on top of one monster, that monster is a Macrocosmos. Now, if you guys don't know what a Macrocosmos is, that monster just, you literally banish anything and everything that gets sent to the graveyard. Sent to the graveyard. Anything. <laughs> it's it's nasty it's dumb i mean i've started practicing with it just to kind of get the idea of what i'm going to be playing against because i don't think i'm going to be playing that deck i don't see myself playing it but if i do come across where i end up having to play it because it is the best deck and it probably ends up rolling into the only deck you can play i'm gonna play it that's just how i am i have to play the best deck and Every time you play the best deck, you learn to get better, you learn to do better, you learn to perform better, and maybe even be able to perform and practice against the best of the best. I don't know. That's kind of, I, I want to be able to get up there. I want to be able to get top, which I'm not saying I haven't topped. I have, just not super high. But yeah, this cash tier format is going to be really interesting. They also have another card I want to interest you guys in right here. It's called Mind Hacker Diablo. Diabolos Mindhacker. So this card is actually really insane. Um, I remember like putting it up on board. Typically you already have like Shangri-La on board <clears throat> and then you go into Mindhacker. But before that, the Kashtira Rise Heart, that one allows you to banish one from your deck and then uh, detach one from Shangri-La and special summon it. Now, because you banish one, uh, your opponent has to banish three cards face down. And because they're banishing face down, Shigeru Law gets to allow them to block a zone. So that's your first zone. Now, once you're able to overlay Rise Heart and whatever you detach and special with the uh, offer Shigeru Law, you go into Mind Hacker. Now, because you're going into Mind Hacker, this one allows you to banish one monster from your extra from your opponent's extra deck face down. That's the first face down banish. Shangri-La triggers, which then blocks another zone. But because a monster is banished face down, Mind Hacker has a second effect where it tells it basically says that you have to ban your opponent has to banish the same amount of cards face down that they already have banished from the top of their deck. So since it's four, they're gonna banish another four face down. Like are you serious? Like eight, another four. So that's eight cards you're losing the first turn. It's dumb. <laughs> but because that extra four that get it banished face down, Shangri-La triggers again saying, I'm going to block another zone. So that's three zones that get blocked automatically on the first turn. I don't know about you guys, but 
Leaving two zones plus an extra monster zone is... It's not enough, I don't think so. I think it's enough probably to try and clear the board with probably, I want to say, Zeus. But, yeah. Just in case you guys don't know what I'm talking about when I say Zeus, I'm talking about Divine Arsenal AA Zeus. It's a long name. But yep, this card, able to clear the board if you attack an XYZ monster. So strategically, you would think about it, you know? You would go into an XYZ monster, I would say, just for fun, Z's go into Abyss Dweller. Then you attack one of the XYZ monsters, which is probably... Or you could, you don't even have to go into Abyss Dweller. You can summon two monsters, attack into Shangri-La, take some damage, overlay into Abyss Dweller or any other XYZ, and then go into Zeus. Zeus, detach, and clear the board. Or... You could just go into Exiton Knight, which also clears the board. <laughs> That's one of the problems that Castier has. Castier has a problem with just being able to have interruptions on their turn. Yeah, they have a Macrocosmos. Yeah, they're able to block your zone. Yeah, they have Mind Hacker. But if they don't special summon off the Shangri La, they're not having really any interruptions. But we'll see. <laughs> Moving on, we got like two more topics we're gonna go over. So we have Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. Ooh, a little bit shiny, there you go. Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. Now this card, Cash is probably most likely gonna be playing it. And this card is just, it's really good. It's just a hand trap. All it is is every time it's in your hand, if your opponent controls monsters, let's say you're playing against Taylor Mate Shizu, um, and as soon as they normal summon a monster, you're gonna activate this. You're gonna send it to the graveyard, and you're gonna banish their most important monster. 100% it's gonna be Tiamat Kakalas. It's just their most important. You get rid of it, it really slows them down. It really, they really, if they're a skill four player, they'll know how to pass through it, but it's really difficult to get past through that, especially when you wanna get starters, especially when you wanna get trap cards, you wanna get interruptions for your opponent. But, I feel like that's enough said. Uh, it's also a tuner, so I mean, I guess you could just normal summon it and go into Baron the Fleur, which is a synchro monster for the Castiras or for any deck. It's pretty generic, but you can just go in for a seven and a three, and it makes ten. And we got you a Baron the Fleur. <laughs> uh, last thing I want to talk about is Kurikara. Now this card, I think it's gonna be amazing. Now that's just my opinion. It could end up being bad. Who, do I, who am I to say it's like the best card? But realistically, I think Kurikara, uh, this card, what this card does is if any, if your opponent activates a bunch of monster, for every monster they, they have on the field, if they activate all the monster effects, this turn, you're able to activate Kurikara's effect and it tributes all of them. And not only that, it's gonna allow, it's gonna special summon itself and gain, I believe it's 1,500, yes, gains 1,500 attack for each monster that goes to the graveyard. And at the end of the turn, you get to special summon any monster from the graveyard. <laughs> so you can just special summon boss monsters. You can even special summon a rice heart to have your own macro on the field, which you probably won't. But I mean, that's, don't tell me that's not insane. I realistically think this card's good, but I might just be overhyping it. I might just be overthinking. I like to doubt myself a lot, which sometimes is pretty bad because if I'm making a simple play from even just playing my deck, making a simple play and I'm just looking like, and I overthink it, it could be bad for me. So just learn your lines. This is all theoretical mostly. So uh, if you guys appreciate this, then cool. Uh, if you guys just enjoyed speaking and having a conversation, at least just me kind of speaking. If you guys want to share your opinions, you can list them down in the comments below. But I really hope you enjoyed this conversation. I really hope you like this talk. I'll try and make this kind of a regular thing, just talking about future formats, talking about current, talking about what's going on in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. I mean, we'll see. We'll see where this ends up taking us. And don't forget, I know, I know, but I will let you guys know. I will be putting up a bunch of stuff. I'm working pretty hard on moving around this room, trying to get a general idea of getting my own stuff and having an area where it looks like I actually play Yu-Gi-Oh and I don't work in an office setting. <laughs> but yeah, 
So I want to say that's it for this today. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Leave any opinions you guys have down below. And if you guys just want to mention me directly, please go on and look at my Instagram and Twitter and I'll be there. See you guys next time.